Did you know that the first optical fiber experiments took place way back in the mid-1800s? But practical applications didn't come around until the 1970s. Now, fiber optic technology can be found in a wide variety of applications, including military and aerospace designs, embedded computing, high-performance data communication, and more. And within embedded computing in particular, fiber optics can be found in a slew of different areas of the design. And this is exactly what we're talking about today. But certainly not all of the above, because then we'd be here for at least a couple of hours. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Anders Thalen from TE Connectivity and I explore the benefits that TE Connectivity connector solutions can bring to fiber optic embedded designs. We also investigate the various VITA standards utilized for these kinds of designs and how optical fiber routing and active optic solutions from TE Connectivity can be used to further enhance the performance of your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. Hi, Anders. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Good to meet you. Excellent. Good to meet you, too. Okay, so we're talking about fiber optics for embedded computing today. But, Anders, before we dig into the details, when it comes to connectors for embedded computing designs, we're looking at a variety of different placements within that design, right? That's right. We have uh, what we say six different levels. You know, we just start at the top with level one is the connection between basic circuitry and its leads. You move down to level two, it's the connections between that component and the actual PCB board. Keep walking down to level three. Now you're looking at connectors, typical connectors that goes between two different PCBs. Like, for example, a plug-in card and a motherboard. Level four, that would be a connection between two sub-assemblies within the same chassis. Level five, now you talk about connections from a sub-assembly to the I.O. ports on the outside of the chassis. And then finally, you have level six, which is a connection to the outside world between physically separated systems. So for this chat between you and I, Amelia, I'm going to focus on level three. That is the connection between the two PCBs, the plug-in cards, we call them typically. Plug-in cards goes into the motherboard. And for that, you need a specific type of connector. It needs to be what we call a blind mate connector. You can, there's a lot of different standards for that. And I will focus on the fiber optic parts of this. I don't know if I told you, but I am a fiber optic guy nothing else. So I will definitely focus on fiber optics. Excellent. Now, Anders, what VITA standard are we looking at for this level three? This would be the VITA 66. That's a specific standard for optics only. So if you have a connection with fiber optics only, you would use the VITA 66. Now, I wouldn't do my job if I didn't mention that that goes Hand in hand, there's a synergy between other VITA standards that handle power and signal and RF. But I'll be focusing on the fiber optic part of this. Excellent. Now, tell me a bit about how we got to where we are in terms of VITA 66. Yeah, sure. So the market really is the driving force behind all of this. The market keeps demanding higher speeds and higher density. And for fiber optics, really the speed is determined by the optical transceiver on your board. But for density, it's all about the connection. We started out with Vita 66.1, which is a full width connector, and it has room for two empty termini. Each of those termini can hold 10 fibers, so it's already relatively high density. But everyone wants more. The market demands more. 
So we move into 66.4, which is haploid and still able to provide the two MT termini. But not even that is good enough. So TE is leading the charge, developing the 66.5, which now has a room for three MT termini. That's 900 gigs of data in one half width connector. Okay, so Anders, what kind of options do we have with Vita 66.5? Yeah, so if we focus on that 66.5, there's a few different styles. We got style A, B, C, and D. And really, style A is slightly lower, and it can accommodate one MT. You have B, which can accommodate two MTs. Style C, once again, we're back to one MT, but you can make this a hybrid. So you can have MTs and RF connectors in the same connecting. We have style D, which is the most recent version, where we now can afford three MTs in one connector. So this is what a possible solution could look like. It would incorporate power, signal, RF, and fiber. We want to give designers out their options. We want them to be able to use these little Lego pieces to build whatever they need for their plug-in cards. And the Vita 66 and different standards such as the 46 will help accommodate that. All right. So... Anders, could we also look at level five and level six as well? Yes, absolutely. We talked about level three. That was just a connection between two PCBs. For level five and six, and to some extent level four as well, you typically use a circular connector. This is an even more rugged design. It needs to withstand even harsher environments because it often goes to the outside of the chassis. For this standard, there's a Vita 87. Once again, we focus on fiber optics, high density only. So looking at the Vita 87, we can once again go from one to two and three and even four MTs in one connection. So the key word is density. That's really what we're striving for. We're listening to the market, answering their cry for density. All right, so what kind of specifications are included in these levels? So like I mentioned, it's based on the 3899 style 3. So it comes with a couple of things that's always going to be part of that shell, just the sheer ruggedness of it. But of course, this is fiber optics, so there's a separate set of requirements on that. Typically, you'll see the minus 40 to 85 Celsius for operational temp. We have durability up to 250 mating cycles. And obviously, this is all tested to mill 8, 10 vibration and shock. And should you need even more mating cycles than 250, everyone is working out there on getting expanded beam incorporated into this as well. We offer the Vita 87 with standard MTs. But to further improve of the durability, we also offer it in expanded beam. So, Anders, there are a number of optical fiber routing technologies that would complement these standards, right? Yeah, that's correct. We talked a lot about the connectors, but of course, there's more to it. For embedded computing, you need connectors. You also need fiber to connect the different connectors. T offers optical fiber routing. It's really an easy way to customize your routing of fiber. And right? if you envision embedded computing, you don't have a lot of room in there. And if you're going to run 48 fibers, 96 fibers in there, you need to do that in a very organized way. And we do that with optical fiber routing. We sometimes lovingly refer to it as the 3D printing of fiber where you can get a custom solution for your box by just handing us a drawing on a napkin and we can work out the rest from there. All right. So what about the active optic solutions here? Yeah, exactly. That's where it all starts, isn't it? Now you generate light in active optics and you receive the light in active optics. TE has an offering. I do want to highlight that. We offer 
what we call the CBOT. It's a modular transceiver. It's a platform developed by TE, and it allows users and designers out there to mix RX, TX, single mode, multi-mode, any way they want to. We offer it up to 10 gigabits per second today, and of course, rugged and reliable as everything else we do, typically minus 40 to 85, and we've been selling this for many a years into the aerospace market. But really the key here is that it's got a unique modular design allowing designers out there more flexibility. We also offer parallel transceivers. We do that in collaboration with Smiths. So that's a perfect collaboration where their transceiver actually fits on the Vita 66.5 footprint. So if we think back to that 66.5 connector, you can actually fit one of these transceivers into that connection. And finally, we have a media converter. That goes on the outside of the box, likely. It would be for designers that have current existing copper I.O., and they want to convert it to fibers. They don't want the hassle of adding PCBs or computation. They want something that's plug and play. You can plug this media converter in, and you'll convert your copper signal into a gig E single mode fiber signal for long haul communication. Excellent. Well, Anders, what would you like my audience to take away from today's Chalk Talk? I think there's two things, really. First and foremost, I like designers out there just to be aware that there is a high density offering for fiber optic connectors. It's out there and it's standardized. It's a Vita 66 and it's the Vita 87. That goes for the inside of the box and the outside of the box. Second of all, I of course want to highlight that TE offers an end-to-end -end solution when it comes to fiber optic designs. You have the transceivers I just mentioned on the board. You have the FiberFlex offering to connect the transceivers to connectors. We have the Vita 66, we have the Vita 87, and we have harnesses that goes on the outside of the chassis. Excellent. Well, Anders, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. I appreciate the time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.